So what is perfection paralysis? This is something that I am going through right now. Well, you guys are probably all familiar with the concept of perfection. <laughs> Sounds so funny. Are you familiar with perfection? No one is familiar with perfection. So yeah, um, well, everyone is probably familiar with perfectionism. And for many, being called a perfectionist is kind of cool. They're like, oh, I only do things to perfection. Look at me. However, perfectionism is actually a symptom of some mental illnesses. So if you want to learn more about it, you can look in DSM, the book that psychologists and therapists in the United States have to refer to in order to make their diagnoses. So yeah, perfection paralysis is a phenomenon that can strike certain personality types more often than others. So if you have experienced trauma, you may be more prone to perfection paralysis. If you have experienced abuse and neglect as a child, you're more likely to develop perfection paralysis. And it's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? So you are so perfectionist, you can't do anything. And it sounds kind of silly, it sounds almost like, oh, why don't you just do it, just start and, and then keep going. And I wish it was this simple. So when you're stuck in perfection paralysis, it isn't laziness, it isn't apathy. You might be very passionate about what it is you want to do. But you know exactly how it's supposed to be done. You have it all planned out in your head and you know all the little details, everything is really clear to you. Once you start doing, once you actually begin something, you very quickly realize that it's not that easy. It's not gonna go the way you want it to go, so you become preoccupied with minuscule details and you might not be able to complete even the first step of your plan because you're so stuck on those little details. So I keep getting interrupted, excuse me. Okay, so, so I was talking about perfection paralysis and um, how if you are prone to it, you might not be able to do anything because it has to be perfect or else it doesn't deserve to exist. And uh, again, sounds like a very simple thing to overcome, but in reality, you can experience pretty severe anxiety and pretty severe, um, you know, just negative aff affect, as they say, as therapists and the likes say. So yeah, the, the just do it mentality, unfortunately, is not helpful to those who suffer from perfection paralysis. Now, and, and again, many look at it as an excuse, as a lame excuse, like, well, you just don't want to do it. And trust me, uh, no matter how much you want to do something, if you suffer from, you know, symptoms of either mental illness or if you have been the victim of trauma. And there are many other reasons why people can um, experience perfection paralysis. Your upbringing can also play a huge role. So the way you were brought up, the way people around you acted. So this actually leads to an interesting point, a point that seems like more patriarchal cultures, Asian patriarchal cultures to be more specific, they seem to worsen um, such conditions. Perfection paralysis seem to be 
more prevalent in people of Asian descent. And obviously that's a broad generalization. If you're Asian or of an Asian descent, there is absolutely no guarantee that you're gonna suffer from it. So the, the experience that I have had for the past 20 years or so is that um, the more passionate you are about something, the more you care about something, the more afraid you are to actually do it. It's almost like um, you know how good it is, you don't want to spoil it, so you decide never to do it, not to disturb the dream or not to destroy the dream. It's, it reminds me a little bit of Yukio Mishima's um, The Golden Temple, I believe, Kinkakuji. I think that's how it is pronounced in Japanese, his book. Really great book, highly recommend. But the, the premise is that there's this monk, this Buddhist monk, who is so in love with the Golden Temple, which was this grand temple in Japan. And it's been a while since I read it. I read it when I was a teen. So um, maybe 20 years ago or so, no, actually 15. Um, and he is so in love with the temple and the war is happening. I think, I think it was about Second World War, maybe, you know, maybe. It's all a blur, so I can't remember. So the, the monk decides to burn the temple because he loves it so much. And, and he can't stand the idea of it being desecrated by these foreigners. He can't stand the idea that somebody can take over the sacred site. So he decides to ruin it first and uh, he succeeds. This story is based on um, true events. So it, I don't think it has been proven. I don't think there was enough evidence that the monk did burn this temple, but it's a pretty common Oh, excuse me, there was a scary sound. So it's a pretty common premise for this story. And, and in the story, King Kakuji, the Golden Temple, I remember reading it and thinking how much I can relate to the monk, how even though his actions are twisted and wrong, I, I could understand where he was coming from. I could understand that, the, I could understand how he felt because I've experienced that too. I thought, yeah, I can see myself being so in love with something that I want to just hold on to it so tightly that it can hurt. So, and I think this is, um, somewhat of a common occurrence in Asian cultures. And again, this is not to stereotype, not to enforce harmful stereotypes, but I think it's interesting from a cultural standpoint to see this uh, happen. And I do, I am, I am familiar with many people from various Asian cultures, South Korea specifically, and uh, I can see some of these trends and I can see perfection paralysis playing a bigger role in some of the Korean folks' life. And again, doesn't mean that people from the West don't experience that. It's just that perfection paralysis seems to be rooted in this preoccupation with the ideal and it seems to be um, rooted also in this notion that you by yourself as an individual is worthless and um, you are worthless, excuse me. So you and your individual contributions are just so minuscule, they don't matter ultimately. And there is a, certainly truth to that. So this is what actually helps me fight perfection paralysis. So far, this was my best solution, is to realize that in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter wh whether what I do is great, 
doesn't matter if what I do is perfect. What matters is that I want to deal with and I enjoy doing it. And um, yeah, that is the only solution I was able to come up with, except for obvious things like, you know, talking to people about it, um, therapy, reading, um, going for long walks, reading poetry, exercising, eating well, drinking water, sleeping enough. Apart from all of this, the other solution I personally found was to realize that ultimately whatever it is I decide to do doesn't matter. So if I do it, whatever. If I don't, who cares? So yeah, this is what I have uh, just thought about, about perfection paralysis. And uh, this is why I'm making this, because I, I really want to express myself more through a visual medium. And I've wanted to do that for five years now. And I didn't let myself. So here is me letting myself deal with, even though it's not good, even though it's far from perfection, I'm going to do it. I want to and I enjoy it.